armaments of the Imperium. Warhammer 40k has a lot going on in it, between the various different species and factions, the large number of branches of the Imperial government and military, the Primarchs, the Emperor, mutants, psychers, chaos gods, and so on and so forth. More important than perhaps any of that, however, at least as far as the actual war in Warhammer goes, are the weapons, equipment, and tools that all of these factions utilize while on the battlefield. The Imperial Guard, the Navy, the Mechanicus, the Sisters of Battle, and the Astartes all use a wide variety of armaments to wage war, in a constant race against death from all of the other factions. The Imperium has the most relatable set of armaments for us, largely consisting of rifles, cannons, machine guns, grenades, and so on, but in 40,000 years of battling, they've come up with some pretty cool toys. This will just serve as a small summary of many of the different weapons available to the Imperium, as an exhaustive list would be quite time-consuming. Let's start with the weapons used by the Imperial Guard, the rank-and-file soldiers of the Imperium numbering in the countless billions that largely rely on strength of numbers over anything else. While ranged weaponry is of course the preferred way of waging war, there are a handful of close quarters weapons utilized by the Guard. All Imperial Guardsmen are issued either a trench knife or a bayonet in case of dire circumstances with some regiments particularly excelling in close quarters, such as the Katachan Jungle Fighters. Officers of the Imperial Guard, however, are often given more impressive melee weapons, including chain swords and power swords, or other power weapons. Chain swords are pretty much what the name implies, a sword with powered teeth, capable of biting and tearing through flesh, bone, and armor. Power weapons, however, most commonly utilize a metal blade or head, which is then sheathed in a corona of disruptive energy that can break the molecular bonds of matter that it strikes. Obviously these are incredibly impressive weapons, and are quite rare, so they are only usually given to the Astartes, Inquisitors, and high-ranking officers. The standard issue ranged weapon for all Imperial Guardsmen is the Laz Gun or Laz Rifle. These weapons are reliable, easy to both produce and maintain, and easily resupplied, requiring only a power cell and no solid ammunition. Laser weapons are accurate, with no physical projectile, although the beam can be diffused by heavy particles in the air and dissipates over long distances. The basic LAS gun is not an incredibly powerful weapon by 40k standards, but it can easily tear through lightly armored personnel, and very little can stand up for long against a barrage of millions of LAS guns firing in unison. The Hell Gun is a more powerful version of the LAS gun, powered by an external energy pack for increased armor piercing. These are considerably more expensive to produce, so they are mainly utilized by the Guard's elite troops, the Stormtroopers. Laz pistols and Hell pistols also exist, generally favored by officers as a sidearm to their chainswords, with shorter range and profile. The Laz cannon is the most powerful of the laser weapons utilized by the Guard, either mounted onto a vehicle or carried by a two-man fire team and is mainly used as an anti-tank weapon. Plasma guns are occasionally wielded by Imperial Guardsmen and Stormtroopers, although while they are far more powerful than LAS guns, they are far more unstable, with the risk of malfunctioning and even exploding in the wielder's hands being a concern. They contain a miniature fusion core that uses liquid hydrogen fuel to energize plasma enough to eject it via a magnetic accelerator. Melta guns, on the other hand, also use plasma, but are more stable in their design, firing a blast of plasma heated to tens of thousands of degrees, capable of melting through almost any material. These are the primary ways in which the Guard and the Astartes deal with enemy armor, but the major drawback is the range, so they are often utilized by specialized, 
tank hunting squads that have to get in close to do a targeted attack. The flamer is another heat-based weapon used by the guard, akin to a flamethrower, that fires liquid promethium, which ignites upon contact with the air. These are primarily used against lightly armored and closely packed troops, with the heavy flamer being a more powerful version, usually mounted on vehicles, although some regiments also use these in two-man teams. Another weapon used by two-man teams of the guard are the missile launchers, which are exactly what it says on the tin. These are armed with either frag or crack missiles, the first of which explode in a large blast wave useful for groups of lightly armored infantry, while crack missiles concentrate the explosion in a much smaller radius, making them useful for taking out enemy vehicles. Frag and crack grenades are also standard issue for guardsmen, with the standard infantry given frag grenades and stormtroopers and veterans given crack grenades. Melta bombs are large grenades based on the same technology as melta guns, useful for neutralizing heavy armor or fortified positions, while forward scouts will often carry snare mines, shaped explosive charges designed for ambushes. While there exists a number of other weapons utilized by the guardsmen across the galaxy, and countless variations on every weapon for different regiments, by and large the standard LAS gun is the weapon most closely associated with the Astra Militarum and the general workhorse of the Imperium. As for their vehicles, the Imperial Guard fields a wide variety of them, from artillery tanks to armored personnel carriers to various forms of light and heavy tanks. The Chimera is their standard personnel carrier, and forms the basis for a large number of other armored vehicles they utilize. The basic Chimera is equipped with a rapid-fire heavy laser weapon, as well as a mounted heavy bolter or heavy flamer, and six mounted LAS guns on the flanks that allow the infantry inside to fire upon the enemy during transport. Variants based on the Chimera chassis include the Salamander, a lightly armored scout vehicle equipped with an autocannon or a heavy flamer, and the Basilisk, the guard's most common artillery tank, which are equipped with the Earth Shaker Cannon, the guard's longest range weapon. The guard's primary battle tank is the Lehman Russ, named after the Primarch, the standard weaponry of which is a battle cannon mounted in the turret and usually heavy bolters on the sides and front. The Lehman Russ is similar to many tanks of our modern era, being cramped inside, loud, and with thinner armor in the rear, but its versatility, ease of construction, and firepower make it a staple of the guard's tactics. The Imperial Guard do not possess any aircraft, as all Imperial space and aircraft fall under the purview of the Imperial Navy aside from a few small exceptions. Moving on to the Navy then, they also command a large variety of spaceships and aircraft, from the largest of the battleships to the smallest of the attack craft. A separate video could easily be made just covering the main starships of the Navy, so for now we'll just cover the broad points. Battleships are the largest ships the Navy utilizes, with sizes varying wildly depending on the ship and the source. Some battleships possess crews of three million men alone, while others only have a relatively small crew of 25,000. They are generally six to eight kilometers in length, although some easily double those numbers, with the Gloriana-class battleships created during the Great Crusade being over 20 kilometers long. Battleships are cumbersome to maneuver, expensive to produce, and costly to maintain, but their capacity and firepower is second to none within the Navy. Grand cruisers are the next step down, although these are of older designs and are in the process of being phased out. Cruisers, then, the next size down, make up the majority of the Navy's fleets, being faster than a battleship while still capable of dishing out tremendous amounts of firepower. Variations exist for these, like all weapons and vehicles of the Imperium, with some cruisers possessing more fighter bays than others, while another might be more defensible or possess longer range weaponry. 
Light cruisers also exist, being even faster and more maneuverable, often used for reconnaissance and patrols. Escorts are the smallest type of warship the Navy possesses, with the two common subclasses being frigates and destroyers. Frigates are larger, better armed, and more heavily armored, while destroyers are the fastest interstellar warships the Navy has. Escorts are generally organized in squadrons of two to six vessels, serving as a screen for larger ships against enemy torpedoes and attack craft, or to finish off enemy cruisers that have been damaged. Of course, the Navy has their own attack craft, small ships with a crew of one to three individuals. The Fury Interceptor is their most common starfighter, being generally under 70 meters long and having a three-man crew of pilot, navigator, and gunner. These are normally equipped with forward-firing banks of LAS cannons and missiles, and are often accompanied by Starhawks, which carry plasma bombs and armor-piercing missiles for use against capital ships. In atmosphere, the Navy fields four types of ships most commonly, starting with the Lightning and Thunderbolt, their strike fighter and heavy fighter respectively. Lightnings are fast, lightly armored planes used for reconnaissance and interception, while Thunderbolts are the primary means by which the Navy controls the skies above a planet, equipped with two sets of twin-linked autocannons and a set of twin-linked LAS cannons as well as a loadout of tactical bombs, air-to-surface hellstrike missiles, or air-to-air skystrike missiles. To support the Guard, they also commonly field Valkyrie transport ships and Vulture gunships, with the Valkyrie being more focused on moving troops quickly, while the Vulture provides heavy fire support. Vultures can be equipped with a vast amount of weaponry, including heavy bolters, twin-linked multi-lasers, Hellstrike missiles, LAS cannons, and Punisher Gatling cannons. Valkyries, on the other hand, are more commonly equipped with just a multi-laser, a couple of manned heavy bolters, and a couple of Hellstrike missiles, but its maneuverability and versatility make it capable of covering a broad spectrum of roles. The Adeptus Mechanicus, being the masters of technology within the Imperium, serve closely alongside the Navy and Guard to maintain and repair all of these various bits of equipment and weapons, but they also have their own branches of military forces, primarily the Skitari. Like all members of the Mechanicus, Skitari are heavily augmented with cybernetics, but specifically ones designed for war, including armor-plated flesh, targeting arrays, and built-in weaponry. Skitari serve a variety of functions for the Mechanicus, and so are often outfitted with different equipment and weapons, but they're generally provided the most advanced weaponry in the Imperium, a curious blend of ancient and modern tech with a high degree of craftsmanship. Some might be provided radium carbines, volatile rifles that fire radiation-coated bullets, quickly irradiating targets they don't kill outright, while slowly killing the Skatari wielding them. Others might be equipped with arc weapons that discharge directed energy blasts, or transuranic arquebuses that fire shells of depleted transuranium capable of puncturing a tank from one side to the other. The most common weapon associated with the Skatari, specifically the Rangers, is the Galvanic Rifle, a weapon modeled after the hunting flintlock rifles of Mars' distant colonial past. These weapons fire galvanic bullets, which cause all of the potential energy of any biological target they strike to burn out in a blast of electrical force, almost certainly killing them. Arguably the greatest contribution the Mechanicus makes to the Imperium as far as weaponry is concerned are the Titans the massive robotic mechs fielded by the Titan legions. These are thought by the Mechanicus to be the greatest physical embodiments of the Machine God, and are often referred to as God Engines. These are the heaviest ground units within the Imperium, with the largest of them standing nearly 500 feet tall, 
while the smallest stand around 50 to 60 feet tall. Obviously, much like the Imperium's land vehicles and spacecraft, Titans can come in a wide variety of designs, with a wider variety of weapon loadouts. Weapons mounted onto the smaller Scout Titans might include the Inferno Cannon, an upgraded version of the Flamer, the Turbo Laser Destructor, used against tanks, or the Vulcan Mega Bolter, comprised of two large caliber Gatling guns capable of projecting a hail of explosive bullets. As we move up in size, the weapons get more and more destructive, such as the Gatling Blaster, which rapidly fires 150mm shells capable of damaging even the heaviest of armored targets, or the Hellstorm Cannon, a directed energy weapon that can decimate an entire city with one salvo. The Plasma Annihilator is the largest and heaviest plasma weapon ever built by the Imperium, drawing enormous amounts of energy directly from the Titan's reactor, and is capable of demolishing any fortification, destroy other Titans, or slaughter massive amounts of infantry with ease. Some Titans are provided massive melee weapons instead, such as Power Fists, although they are more commonly seen on the Chaos Titans of the Dark Mechanicus. Titans are the biggest and baddest of the ground forces that the Imperium can muster, so it doesn't get much more devastating than this without resorting to larger scales of apocalypse, such as orbital bombardment. The Mechanicus, along with the Guard, also possess smaller mechs, known as Imperial Knights, standing generally around 30 to 40 feet tall and piloted by a single individual. These combat walkers are old pieces of tech from the dark age of technology that have managed to survive into the present, and come from specific night worlds, planets with feudal governments and numerous laws and rituals revolving around these imperial knights. Knights generally come in two main varieties, the paladin and the errant with the Errant being more focused towards close quarters warfare, and the Paladin being more suited for general roles. They each can be outfitted with all the usual sorts of Imperial weaponry, scaled to their size, including Flame Cannons, Avenger Gatling Cannons, Melta-Guns, Laz Cannons, and massive Chain Swords. The primary ranged weapon of the Paladin is the Rapid Fire Battle Cannon, a weapon capable of penetrating even Titan armor, and allows the knight to act as a mobile, rapid-firing artillery cannon. Practically all knights are also equipped with an ion shield that they can position around themselves to deflect and slow incoming fire. While there are of course other branches of the Imperial military that utilize certain specialized weaponry, such as the phase swords and neural shredders of the Officio Assassinorum, or the automatic combat shotguns of the Ogryn, the group that otherwise gets access to the most exciting weapons of war are the Adeptus Astartes. The Space Marines are the scalpel to the guard's hammer, the manifest will of the Emperor on the battlefield, and so they are given a wide variety of weapons and equipment to achieve victory. Unlike the Guard, Space Marines will often utilize their melee weapons to tear through targets in a maelstrom of death, aided by their enhanced speed, strength, and coordination. By far the most common melee weapon wielded by the Astartes is the Chain Sword, a larger variant than the one given to Guard officers. Each Space Marine chapter will forge their own Chain Swords with their own differences, but their function is always the same, to loudly tear through whatever the Marine chooses to grind its vicious teeth against. The Chain Sword is popular among the Astartes for good reason, as very little could hope to compare with the lethality of a skilled Space Marine sawing through muscle and bone with one in his hand. There are downsides, however, as they don't perform well against heavy armor, they consume Promethium fuel to power their engine, and they require large amounts of maintenance between battles, albeit mundane rather than specialized maintenance. 
Other melee weapons commonly seen among Space Marine units include the Power Fist, an armored gauntlet with an energy field surrounding it, Power Swords or Mauls that use a similar energy field to quickly slice through armor and flesh, and Lightning Claws, often wielded by Assault Terminators, and also possessing a disruptive energy field. Moving on to ranged weaponry then, we have the most common weapon of the Astartes, and likely the most iconic weapon in all of Warhammer 40k, the Bolter. The standard Bolter is more akin to a rapid firing rocket launcher than a rifle, shooting 75 caliber projectiles that are self propelled by their own solid fuel, much like a miniature rocket. These projectiles, called bolts, contain an explosive head that detonates upon impact, instantly tearing apart nearly any small target. There are a number of different designs for the standard bolter, but by far the most common is the Godwin pattern, capable of holding 30 rounds and containing a targeter that links with the marine's helmet to aid in accuracy. A bolter designed for an Astartes is large, with most humans being unable to even lift one without a supporting brace, and even if they could fire one, the recoil would most likely rip their arm out of its socket. There are smaller versions of the bolter made for normal humans, as well as bolt pistols, but these can't hope to possess the same stopping power as a Space Marine's. Other variants of the bolter commonly used include the Storm Bolter, essentially two bolters attached together, and the Heavy Bolter, a remarkably weighty weapon that fires even higher caliber shells. Astartes can also employ a wide variety of bolt ammunition, including Inferno Bolts containing Promethium cores designed to immolate targets, and Hellfire Rounds designed for use against Tyranids utilizing thousands of needles in the tip to inject a mutagenic acid into the target. Space Marines also employ all the sorts of weaponry one would expect from a fighting force, albeit typically larger than normal and more deadly. The Flamer and Heavy Flamer are commonly seen to cover large amounts of enemy infantry. Various plasma weapons are utilized including the Plasma Incinerator, and grenades or melta bombs are a common item every Astartes will bring into battle with them. It's hard to compete with the Bolter, however, as Space Marines believe it to be the instrument of the Emperor's divinity, and a large part of their day when not in battle is spent maintaining their Bolter and entreating the machine spirit believed to be inside of each one. Obviously this is just a short summary of all of the different weapons available to the Imperium, and a good deal has been left out. Generally if it can rip, tear, pierce, shred, or most commonly explode, someone in the Imperium is wielding it on a battlefield somewhere. Warhammer 40k is primarily a war game, so a great deal of time has been spent over the years developing all of the various tools of war each faction is able to use. While all of this sounds awfully impressive, between the billions of las guns, the massive titans, and the hordes of super soldiers wielding rapid firing rocket launchers, it's important to keep in mind that all of the other factions in 40k have equally impressive, if not more so, tools. What might be ridiculously overpowered in another universe is the bare minimum to survive in 40k, and that's why it's awesome.